Our terms are very simple. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the king. Or your house burns. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Well, they didn't give us just one trailer, but two dueling black and green ones, which was a great marketing idea for the series. I'm going to give my thoughts on both of them and break it all down, starting with the black trailer. This one begins with what looks like a funeral pyre, which I'm assuming will be any remains of Lucerus and Arax that Rhaenyra found near Storm's End, because a few frames after this, we see Rhaenyra bending down on the beach with Cyrax next to her. We have a clip of Aegon showing some attitude and newfound confidence with the voiceover of Rhaenyra saying that Alicent's son sits on her throne. We're going to see Jace up at the wall, and if you're like me, you did a double take on this shot because at first I didn't think that was Jace at the right. His hair has grown rapidly in the days since he left Dragonstone. Maybe it's that northern air. Anyway, as I've mentioned before, I'm looking forward to seeing the Starks enter the story and how Jace's visit there goes with Cregan. And I really hope they take their time here and we get Jace up north for a couple of episodes. I love the visuals of Rhaenyra. They give the aura of confidence, determination, and focus. The final shot of her in season one I felt wasn't very good. The emotion in it just seemed a bit off and could have benefited from another take on that scene, but here she's showing real screen presence that resonates. We get two different viewpoints, one from Corlys and the other Rainies. Corlys is saying to Rhaenyra that they must crush this beast at its head, whereas Rhaenys, on the other hand, when the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. And while that's true to an extent, it comes across as trite and could be said about any war, really. Obviously, if you're sane, you want to avoid conflict. But what can be done at this stage? Once Vagar went rogue, I don't see how you can find peace. Rainey's is saying that reason is forgotten due to the desire to kill and burn, but in actuality, it's really the desire to win and keep your side of the faction from being killed and destroyed. It's not as if there's an exit strategy now for either the Blacks or even the Greens for that matter. Rhaenyra and Alicent were both seeking a solution before Lucerus, and now it would take one side fully submitting and throwing itself on the mercy of the other, and that's not reasonable. Our terms are very simple. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the king, or your house burns. I love the scene of Daemon. It's reminiscent of Aegon the Conqueror outside Harrenhal, and I'm pretty sure that's where Daemon is in this clip. We get to see Bela on Moondancer 2, and the Greens in a funeral scene. Book readers know what event this follows. And some of the fight sequences in there are likely from Rook's Rest, which is the one big battle we're going to see in Season 2 with significant consequences for both sides. We fight for our queen! That sounds like it's the Cargill twin who has sided with Rhaenyra. His brother, of course, is on the side of Aegon. To make these twins even more confusing for audience, one is named Eric with an A and the other Eric with an E. Eric with an E is on the side of Rhaenyra. This table scene looks to be Rhaenyra with the dragon seeds. The dragon seeds, of course, are those being recruited to ride the unclaimed dragons at Dragonstone. And you can't have a trailer without Vagar in it. Craxes 2 is ready to be unleashed. In my life, I've endeavored to serve both my house and the realm. And somehow none of it matters. Now let's jump to the green trailer, which opens with Alicent still believing in the myth that Viserys, on his deathbed, wanted Aegon on the throne. This is the same dying man who had just dragged himself to the throne to save his daughter. What's funny is that neither Otto nor Aegon believe the story either. He had 20 years to name the heir and never did. Steadfastly, he upheld Rhaenyra's claim. He changed his mind. Wow. <laughs> no. He could have, but he never did. Because he didn't like me. My guess is that this image is Sunfire, Aegon's dragon. While they've done an amazing job on the show with the dragons, my one complaint is Sunfire. We didn't get to see him in season one, well, unless you're counting this long distance shot. He's supposed to be one of the most beautiful dragons, and so far it doesn't seem as if they're doing him justice. Also, he looks very similar to Cyrax. I'll wait, though, to see what we get in season two, because these images go by pretty quickly and they might not do Sunfire full justice. I can't help but laugh at this auto clip. 
They wish now not for the good of the realm, but for the satisfaction of vengeance. How's that for self-awareness? Suddenly, he's thinking about what's best for the realm. Yet they hid Viserys' death, defied the king's wishes as to whom would succeed him, and then rushed to coronate Aegon before Rhaenyra could find out what was going on. And then we had Otto planning to kill Rhaenyra's entire family and forcing other houses to kneel and accept Aegon or face death or imprisonment in the Red Keep. Yeah, that's definitely in the best interest of the realm. And while we're on Otto, I love the nonverbal aspect of this scene as Aegon ascends the throne. You can just feel the hesitancy, discomfort, and doubt in Otto for Aegon. Aegon displays a lot of cockiness and foolishness in this trailer. And the path to victory now is one of violence. Good. To war, then. You can tell he's letting his position go to his head and doesn't have an inkling of how costly and dangerous all this is. It's laughable, too, when he claims he's as fearsome as any of them, meaning any of the combatants in the war. Nah, not even close, Aegon. This scene is one of the Cargill twins in a sword fight. Book readers have a good idea of what this moment might be. As I expected, coming into this season, Allison appears to be burdened the most from this war. This should be a consistent thread for her, one where her despair will only deepen. And like his brother Aegon, Aemond is fooling himself too. My uncle is a challenge I won't come. If he dares face me. And what I said in the black trailer goes for the green one too. You can't have one without Vagar in it. And the clip here I think is from another segment of the same one that they used in the black trailer. The dragon at the very end I believe is Dreamfire, Helena's dragon. Not sure why they seem to be prodding her a bit here, but it makes sense at Streamfire. She looks similar to Danny's dragons on Game of Thrones, and many have speculated that she's the mother of Drogon, Rhaegal, and Viserion, but that's for another video. And finally, but most importantly, we have an exact premiere date, and it will be June 16th. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're interested in more on House of the Dragon and A Song of Ice and Fire, listen to Caraxes and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you soon.